दी डायमंड सूत्र एवन द स्टेट ऑफ अवेयरनेस विद इन वेन एवर बी imagine or think of heaven we look up towards the sky this is how we are conditioned but we do not know really what heaven means heaven is a state of awareness that is your inner state this is under the series meditation in its various aspects i have heard a beautiful story about a jewish mystic his name is baal shem after death he went to heaven there he saw an old jewish mystic reading talmud the jewish scripture he was surprised to see this if even in heaven one has to read scriptures then where does this end the angel who was showing baal shem everything told him mystics are not in heaven instead heaven dwells within the mystic mystics are not in heaven instead heaven dwells in the mystic heaven is not a place where only mystics enter verily heaven is a state of awareness inside the mystic and for that matter it is inside each one of you but you are not aware of this in a state through meditation slowly and slowly you become aware of your inner space heaven is the state of awareness when there is harmony there is oneness bliss overflows your heart becomes a mirror like that reflects all that comes in front of it heaven is a state of awareness within you will not enter heaven instead heaven will enter you you make way for heaven to enter you but your desires have closed the entrance your conditionings your social upbringing that creates the dust on your consciousness all these have closed the door and it appears instead of door it appears as if instead of door there is a wall and the entrance is blocked will the entrance block by desire even in heaven you will recite your scriptures which is the way to take you forward you are told to follow the ways of rituals rituals come in the category of actions you are doing something according to hindus it comes within the domain of karma kand and you are being and the entire process of inward journey requires moving from doing to be from doing to be people come in the company of mystics and want to teach the mystic even about the rituals that it is incumbent on a muslim to read five times namaz 
Yes, in the beginning it is. In the beginning, when you are learning, you have to follow the rules of grammar. But does Shakespeare follow the rules of grammar? Instead, whatsoever Shakespeare speaks becomes the rule of grammar. Whatsoever a master musician composes becomes the ultimate music. Whatsoever Jalaluddin Rumi wrote, however he used the words in a particular composition became the grammar. Do you want to follow the grammar or grammar, the rules of grammar to follow you? A mystic is the one whom angels follow. And when I spoke of the particular composition of Alama Iqbal during my recent talk at a concert Fanafiyalla at George Washington University in Washington, D.C. Sarva Sajda Hua Kabi Jun Namaz Me Whenever I bow down in prayer, Sarva Sajda Hua Kabi Jun Aane lagi zami se sada, a voice started echoing from the earth. Tera dil to hai sanam ashnam. Tujhe kya milega namaz mein, O beloved, O my beloved friend, your heart has become now a mirror. What shall you gain in prayer? The whole purpose of the prayer, the whole purpose of the ritual is to invoke the heart center. Heart center is the door to reach to the inner. And the moment that you have found the door, you want to remain at the door, continuing your rituals or enter into it and see whatsoever is happening. So when Baal Shain saw a old mystic reading Talmud even in heaven. This is the situation of all the people around us. They come to the mystic. They want to continue their rituals. And then they find that the progress is not taking place. You will recall I have narrated this incident several times. For Muslims, prayer mat is considered to be one of the most important and sacred peace. On this, the Muslims offer their prayers, they fold it back, and they keep it in a safe custody. The Mughal Emperor Shah Jahan carried all his four sons to his master, Hazrat Khwaza Muhammad Masoom Razila Tala Unu Naqshbandi in Sahind to inquire who will be the next emperor of India. So Hazrat Father Muhammad Masoom was sitting, he got up from the seat and one by one asked each one of the sons of Shah Jahan, the emperor, who were young boys, to sit down on the place that was meant for him. Each one of them refused, saying that, how can I sit down, this is your place. As a matter of respect, the disciples do not sit on the place which is meant for the Master. When Hazrat Muhammad Masoom asked the youngest son, Aurangzeb, 
he read a couplet and that was very meaningful. He said, if your master asks you to dip your janamas in wine, if your master asks you to dip your janamas, the prayer mat into wine, do so, because he knows what is hak. He knows what is truth. That time you do not question. And that is the way for inward journey. And he sat down. As a matter of respect, he read that couplet. Because the master is asking to do this, without a question, without any thought arising in his mind, he read this couplet, if your master asks you to dip your janamas into wine, please. Do so because he knows what is hak. It is the master who has to answer the question. I recall many years ago, my father's mother wanted to be initiated by the Sheikh Sufi Brijmohanlal. So she asked my mother to plead her case. But she was very much engrossed into ritualistic kind of worship, keeping fasts, observing all those regular rituals which a religious person observes. In the beginning, the Sheikh Brij Mohanlal remained quiet. When my mother pleaded again and again, he asked her one thing, find out from your mother-in-law if she will leave all those rituals that she is doing, if she will leave all those rituals, sacrifice those rituals to be initiated. When my mother asked her, she said that she has been doing since a small girl. She cannot leave that. So where does the trust come in the master? Where does the trust come in the master? And a spiritual journey requires trust. You are not trusting the master, instead you are trusting the unknown and unknowable. Master becomes simply a link. The moment you begin to trust the unknown and unknowable, your journey begins. Your desires have created a dust and eventually the entrance is blocked. Even in heaven you will recite your scriptures, which is the way to take you forward. Even if you reach heaven beyond which nothing exists, you will carry your ladder or your boat so that you can move beyond the heaven. This is what happens. You are in the company of a master, but you are still continuing your rituals, etc. Meditation or dhyan means you have reached the shore. When you reach the shore, what you need to do? Take a plunge into it. You have reached the shore on your own. No one has forced you. And when you reach the shore on your own, you will not hesitate in taking a jump into it. And the moment you take a jump, something happens. Heaven is inside you. Wherever you go, 
heaven moves with you. Joshua was right when he said, when he said, if you have finished the last meal, then wash the plate. I ask you, have you finished your last meal? For many lives you have been fulfilling your desires and you still have not solved the simple mathematics, simple ar arithmetic of desires. Food will not s satiate your hunger. Instant food increases the hunger. If you have tasted one dish in a restaurant and you find it is very tasty, and the waiter asks you, tells you about another dish, you are ready to taste that also. Maybe there is no room, but you want to taste it. Today you are looking for an ordinary car for convenience. Once this desire is fulfilled, the desire to have better car arises and this you consider normal. How long will you continue this process? When will you be able to see that there is no relation between food and hunger, thirst and water? The day you realize that water cannot quench your thirst, you will search that will quench your thirst. This is a bit difficult to believe because you have been thinking water quenches thirst. Those who know say only fulfillment can quench your thirst. First, thirst is quenched, then the water reservoir appears. Only with fulfillment desires vanish and this fulfillment comes from within. Have I finished the last meal? Is the question each seeker has to ask himself. Without this, do not go to the master to waste his time and your time as well. Be finished with the world, otherwise you will remain in a dead end. Now, it is difficult to be finished with the world. Then what is the solution? Mindfulness is the way. Through mindfulness, moment to moment, you will enter into a different kind of realm. On the surface, you may be engaged into the world and all the worldly activities but the world will not be within you. Otherwise, on the surface you will pretend to be spiritual but deep within something else will be flowing and you will be on a dual journey. When Joshua asked the aspirant have you finished with the last meal? To this the disciple responded, yes I did. And he was very confident, yes I did. That is why I have come to you. Otherwise there is no use to come to you. Now food remains now, there isn't any food remained on your platter to be consumed. You remember the remainder of the food that you leave on the platter that goes into the garbage bin. And in spiritual terms, that which is not consumed consciously goes into your subconscious and unconscious layers. For lives this has been happening and you have gathered a whole reservoir. Joshua said, then matter is straightforward. 
99% meditation has happened when you realize the futility of desire. You have realized the futility of desire that desire cannot be fulfilled. Food satisfies not your hunger. Water quenches not your thirst. Sex fulfills not the desire for sex. All these simply act as fuel to the fire. In such a realization, 99% meditation has happened. For the remaining 1%, you will have to work. It is like washing the pot or taking a shower. Dhyan or meditation as you know it has two phases. First, your life as you are living must appear to you as futile. This should be your own experience. Buddha's evidence will be meaningless to you. Whatsoever Buddha or Jesus says is not your experience. It should be your realization. Double standards will not work. Omar Khayyam has a composition which is very meaningful. Kya ho hasil unke zikr se jo peekar mast hui. What shall you gain, O fool, by talking about those who are drunk? If you want to know what drink does, you have to drink yourself. By knowing what happens, by knowing the experiences of the others who have drunk, you will not gain the ex know what the ex drink will do. You want to know the experience of marriage life, you go on reading the anecdotes of those who have entered into it. I have heard there was a beautiful place on the mountain where Everyone aspires to go for their honeymoon and in such tourist places there are always guides who know the periphery, are familiar with all those sightseeing places. So there was one such guide, he always used to guide the people about the place and the nitty-gritty of honeymoon. So one day one couple asked him, how do you know so much in details about honeymoon? Are you married? He said, no. My experience is theoretical. That will not help you. So meditation or dhyan has two phases. The first phase, your life as you are living, must appear to you as futile. This should be your own experience, not the experience of Buddha or Jesus. Because you have to walk on your own feet to reach to a certain distance. I can give you the direction how to reach the destination, but you have to walk yourself. It should be your realization. Nietzsche says, Understood there are sorrows and sufferings, yet still there is a ray of hope. Although suffering is there, but the happiness that comes after is deeper. Because of thorns I cannot leave the flowers. To Nietzsche, Buddha and Jesus, to Nietzsche, Buddha and Jesus are fools. To you as well these masters appear fool. But you are not courageous like Nietzsche to say this. This is not going to help. Your life is a suffering. You know desires bring pain. But this is only half in doing because inside there is hope that after pain happiness comes. 
As a result, you do not want to be finished with the world, the world of duality. Suffering and happiness are two sides of the same coin. You cannot save one and discard the other. The two exist together like head and tail. There is nowhere heaven and hell. Heaven is your desire and hell is where you want to send all your enemies and heaven is the place that you want to secure for yourself. Heaven and hell are always together but for your convenience you have separated these but re remember in reality thorns and flowers are together inseparable they are nourished and nurtured by the same roots they speak of the world and the freedom from the world you speak of heaven and hell and the masters speak of freedom from duality. It is a state when sorrow and happiness both dissolve. No duality. Buddha and Mahabir refer to this state when there is no duality as the state of peace and bliss. If you have finished the last meal, then go and wash the pot then not much work is left. To attain to meditation is easy only when the first phase is finished. If you are not finished, then I would ask you to be mindful moment to moment as you interact into the world of objects and beings. When a platter is in front of you, you know you must eat for survival, but you are aware that food does not satiate you. You are mindful how much to consume. And with mindfulness, you will realize slowly and slowly the futility of all these things. And when you use the tool of mindfulness, your 99% work happens on its own. You want to start with 1%, leaving the remainder to happen on its own. It cannot happen. You want to engage in cleaning the pot without having the last meal. As soon as you have finished with the last meal, do not think, do not delay, just go and wash your pot, just go and wash your pot. Meditation will happen, the purity, the compassion, the religiousness, that is your nature will manifest. This is your true religion. What is true, true re religion? The experience of truth. Purity is truth. Compassion is truth. And know this as your religiousness. Then you will not be a Hindu, Muslim, Christian or Jew. You will be simply religious. This is the religion of God. Just pure childlike innocence where there is no room for any kind of religious cunningness. Your so-called religions are false. How can you be in the company of the Master if you have not finished the last meal? The day last meal will be finished, Master will come to you. This is Dhyan, this is meditation. Meditation is a state of playfulness beyond the mind and its duality. Meditation has nothing to do with mind. 
meditation happens when you are beyond the mind. Beyond the mind when I say, I mean beyond the mind is, is beyond the duality. Mind is dual, it thinks in terms of the duality, this or that. That is where in Bhagavad Gita Krishna tells Arjun and uses the phrase Sitoshana Samadukha one who is equipoised in heat and cold, Sukha Dukha in pain and happiness, that alone is on the path of meditation. And this is the ultimate that one has to attain to that state. It has nothing to do with the mind. It is a state beyond the mind. Beyond the mind means beyond duality. So first step is to be playful about meditation. When you are playful about meditation, no one can destroy it. Not even mind can destroy meditation, but the moment you become serious, you enter into a problem. When you are serious about meditation, it becomes an ego trip. You will hear people, they come to me and they say they had been doing a very strong meditation. They are, they do deep meditation every day. They do this kind of meditation or that. When you are serious about meditation, it becomes an ego trip. You may think, you may start thinking yourself as a great meditator. You may begin to think yourself holier than the other. This is what happens to your so-called people who enter into the religious fold. Their journey remains a subtle ego gain. That is why I want to warn you of this. Be playful about meditation, choose any technique and see if it fits you. Be sincere about it, but not serious. Sincerity is very important, not the seriousness. Meditation is the song of the being. What did I say? Meditation is the song of the being. How can meditation be the song of the being? Meditation is the song of the being, the inner silence. Sing it. It is the dance of harmony. Dance to the pulse of harmony. Take meditation to be fun and you will be surprised. When you are playful, Meditation grows in leaps and bounds. Take meditation to be fun and you will be surprised. When you are playful, meditation grows in leaps and bounds. Remember there is, a no, there is no goal that you are pursuing. You are just enjoying the sitting, just enjoying the very act of sitting no longing for any gain, yogic powers, mystical powers, miracles, etc. Masters warn you against these. Along the spiritual journey, these are pitfalls. Take life as a cosmic joke, then you will find you are suddenly relaxed. There is nothing to be tensed or to cling to. Suddenly a change begins, a transformation. All small things of life begin to have a new meaning because you have given it a texture of mindfulness. Nothing remains small. Everything has the flavor of meditation and oneness. When you attain meditation 
and meditation flowers in you. You are no more Hindu, Muslim or Christian. You are no more Hindu, Muslim or Christian. You are simply lover of life. Meditation teaches you how to rejoice in life. How to be happy under all circumstances and situations. This rejoicing, this happiness is the door towards God in meditation. Dance your way to God. Sing your way to God. Much will happen. Dance your way to God. Sing your way to God. A new meaning will arise. 